Hey everyone, Mark Price here at devslopes.com and today we're gonna to talk about version control, specifically about Git. So let's get started. What I'm gonna show you is kind of how version control works. And I wanna give you a tip. From now on and here into the far future, as your development career progresses, if you are not using version control on every single project, you are doing it wrong, okay? I don't wanna ever see you creating a project that doesn't have version control in some form or fashion, okay? That is the law. Put it in right now in your brain. Always, always, always use version control, okay? Not to be confused with birth control or things like that. This is actually you know, really important. So, okay, what is version control? Well, let's talk about code here, okay? So you write code and it creates programs, okay? So let's uh, talk about a document. Let's say we got this document here, okay? It's an ugly document, it's okay. This is your document, okay? You've written some code on it. And it, actually, it doesn't even have to be code, it could be anything, it could be a text document, whatever, but we're gonna talk about code. So you've written some code here, okay? Now, if you're only one person, and if you're working by yourself, that's fine. You can keep making changes to this, and no one cares, right? You can just keep adding and changing it all that you want. However, what happens if maybe somewhere right here, you broke something, okay? And then now you're 5,000 lines later, okay? 5,000 lines later of code, and you just realized you had a big, big bug, okay? Well, now you have to dig through 5,000 lines of new code to go back and find this code here. So this is a problem. You've just done a lot of work, and now you're gonna have to do a lot more work to find this bug and go back. Okay, this is one problem version control can solve and I'll tell you how it'll solve it in a second. Here's the next problem. Okay, you've got a few people. Let's just say two people. Uh, happy Sam here, okay? That's Happy Sam. And uh, this one is beady-eyed Pete. And he's never really happy, okay? So you've got two people here. This is uh, Pete, this is Sam. And they've got their own code files, right? But they're working on the same project. Okay, so let's say that Sam wants to make some changes to the code base, okay? So he, he makes changes, okay? And then Pete makes his own changes, okay? Now, here's the question. This is the same project. They're building an app together. How does Sam get his changes over to Pete? He's made one, two, three changes, and now Pete's made one, two, three changes. Well, Sam's like, okay, let's go ahead and load up Dropbox. So, you know, Dropbox, maybe you've done this before. So Dropbox, and then, uh, he hands it over to Pete. He's like, I made some changes. So Pete now has a new code file. So he then opens up the code file. So he, he opens up this code file here. And then what he does is he grabs the changes. He finds all the changes that were made. And then he puts them here in his code, okay? And he mixes them in. And he's like, okay, I put your changes in the code now. Now I need to give you the latest file. So then Pete sends over the combination back to Sam. Okay, here's the new file with all of Sam and Pete's changes in it, and then that's gonna go ahead and overwrite this. And then uh, if you got a third person here, let's say uh, pointy-nosed uh, Sally joins the project, you know, in her beady, angry eyes. She woke up on the wrong side of the bed. So she now joins the project. Okay, so now you've got people transferring code, okay, to all the different players on the team. Does that make sense? And we got this big mess. Who has the latest version, blah, 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 blah. And that's, that's how it used to be a long time ago. A long, long time ago. Do you think that's effective? No, oh, that's terrible. This is all bad, okay? Plus, it's, you're manually taking these changes, inserting them, oh, it's, it's nasty. So this is not what we wanna do. Problem one is saving your files if you have problems going back and being able to revert and uh, find those issues. And then you've got, um, this whole issue here with multiple people on the same team. Thus, version control was created, okay? And what version control is, is the controlling of versions of documents, okay? So let's talk about scenario one with your code backup files. If someone was using version control, let's go back to scenario one. So we'll make a new person here, keep it interesting. This is Jerry, okay? And Jerry has code. Now let's say Jerry's using version control. So he makes change one, okay, to his document, and it's saved. Change two is saved, 
And we're gonna call these actual commits. That's the, that's the phrase that you'll use with version control, especially in regards to git. So he's making commits, right? So he's committing. So what he's doing is every time he's making a change, he's now committing to version control. Okay, it's being committed. Now let's say he comes to version four and he finds a bug here. It's like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Well, now what he can do is he can go check out. It's called checking out. You know, like when you're checking out a girl or guy, whatever, uh, except in this case, you're checking out code, not really related. Anyway, he's checking out or he wants to check out a previous commit because he wants to locate where his problem is. So what he can do is he can actually check out, let's say right here, number three, and then he can run his code. His code is restored back to that previous version and he can say, okay, the bug still exists here. So that is not where it happened. And then he can check out another one, another previous commit. And he's like, okay, the bug is gone here. So then what he can do is he can analyze the differences between those two code changes. He doesn't have to go back to the 5,000 lines of code to find where the problem is. He can analyze it between the last two changes there where his problem was. And let's say that it was a small problem. Well, he may not want to fix it here. He can go back up here, but at least he knows where it is now. And then he can go fix that problem. Or he could just take it out of this commit altogether. Um, and then you might have cascading problems down through here. But regardless, uh, the point is he can now easily solve his problem because he can check out previous versions of his code. Also, this is important here besides just the checking out of previous code. This allows you to have multiple versions, okay? Multiple versions of your application. It's like saving backups, right? Saving backups, that's what this is. So this is safe. This is much better than the first scenario we're talking about, okay? Now let's talk about the other scenario where we have multiple people, okay? So this guy here, so happy. He loves the code, all right? And he's got his code here. And then let's go over here and uh, this guy's name is Sam too, but this is a uh, sinister Sam. He like plays online games and uh, he thinks it's real cool about having that handle. Okay, he's got his code. And then well, who you've got down here is you've got uh, this guy, okay? And this is Harry. And Harry has his own code too. Okay, how do we solve this problem? Do you have any ideas? Where does version control come into play? Well, let's take a look at this. So let's say Jim makes changes one, two, and three, and Sinister Sam makes changes one, two, and three. And let's also say Harry, well, Harry sucks at coding, so he only made one change, and it wasn't really good. Uh, and uh, anyway, so you've got these three, these three people here. I'm just kidding, no one sucks at coding. This is practice, you get better over time. And uh, you're like, thanks for demotivating me. So they've all made their changes, right? Remember how before we had to swap documents, all that kind of stuff, well now, what we can do, is Jim can now commit, okay? So he's made these three commits, these three commits, these three commits. He can now push them up to a server, okay? Or some location, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's it's arbitrary. The location's arbitrary, but let's just call this the uh, let's just call this the server for right now, okay? So what he can actually do is he can push these changes here, okay? And then what can happen is Sinister Sam, he can actually pull down those changes, okay? So he can we're gonna call this push. So Jim can push. Sinister Sam can pull, and what happens is it's gonna pull those changes, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically inject those changes where they need to go in Sam's code. Automatically, it's gonna inject them in there. And if there's no conflicts, meaning if no one edited the same line of code at the same time, um, it's called a merge conflict, and we'll talk about that later on uh, in, in the lessons, but it'll do it automatically and inject them right in there. Well, that's cool, so now that's pulled, and now with those things merged, this is called a merge, so Sinister Sam, Sinister Sam has now merged those changes, merged. Now what he can do is he can actually push the merge back to the server, so the server's now up to date with Jim's and Sinister Sam's code, and now Harry, okay, he can actually pull down both of their changes, so he's pulling, and it's gonna inject them all in here, boom, 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 okay? And then once those are merged, Harry can now push all the changes back up, and now the server has everyone's code changes. No one had to swap files, and it happened all automatically. The pushing and the pulling, like I drew it out here, but really, you could literally, if, all, if everything worked out the way it was, you could literally make your changes, pull down someone else's changes, merge them in, and push them back, and you could do that within a couple of minutes, okay? Or less, okay, seconds even. So we went from this massively crazy process of managing people's code to it working automatically, and everyone's so happy, even Sinister Sam is starting to break out a smile. Okay, devious smile, but because uh, he put a bug in the code. But anyway, 
So version control, very, very powerful, okay? Never, ever, 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 ever write any code anymore on any project if you don't have version control. And of course, the most popular version control system right now is called Git GIT. There are other systems such as Mercurial, Perforce, SVN, things like that. And some larger companies are still using those, but Git is blowing away the world right now. It's fantastic. And that's what we're using in these lessons here. And it's not that hard. Even a beginner can get up and running with it fairly quick. So that's version control. That's Git. It's starting to make sense. It's starting to get your brain wrapping around the concept. I, what, in the end, what I want you to think about is just imagine having multiple versions of a file and a system that manages that for you. So you never have to copy and paste again. And because the, the more you have to do copying and pasting, the more error prone your code becomes and you never ever want